Hi photo students, this is a very quick run through on uh, the camera that I'm using as a loaner camera for the course. It's a Nikon D3500. Uh, you can see the model number is right there. Uh, this is a entry level DSLR camera and I'm giving you a lot of video resources on explaining what a DSLR is, but essentially the DSLR stands for uh, Digital Single Lens Reflex. And so what that means on a camera, and if you're thinking about this um, in reference to film photography or analog photography, it's uh, virtually the same except your film is a sensor. It's a digital sensor instead of film. Um, anyway, you have on many DSLR cameras, one of the signifiers is a detachable lens. Now that's changed now. There's mirrorless uh, cameras and, and a whole slew of um, kind of little pocket-sized cameras that also have detachable lenses, meaning you can switch out the different types of lenses you want to have. But in essence, this is a... Um, signifier for a DSLR. Uh, the reason why people like DSLRs often isn't because of their bulk or their size, but because of the image quality you can get out of them uh, for relatively cheap. Uh, this is a really solid intro camera that can get you some really good um, quality photographs. Now, uh, when I say detachable lens on a camera like this, most often there's a button that releases and there's usually on this ring on the inside here, you can see a little white, let's see if we can get that to focus, yeah. There's a little white dot right there. Uh, let's see, there we go, perfect. That usually lines up with a dot on the lens itself. Um, you can see it just under there. So if I take this lens and I twist and line up those two white dots, uh, hopefully in focus for you, there we go, uh, then you can pull the lens apart or detach it. Now, uh, the lens reflex um, components in a camera like this is that, is that if you can see inside there, there's actually a mirror. Um, yeah, there we go. There's a mirror inside of there that's bouncing to another mirror that's housed up here which is seen through the viewfinder. So your viewfinder bounces a mirror down to another mirror, which allows you to see directly through your lens or what your lens is um, pointed at. There are other cameras called rangefinder cameras that bypass that. Uh, it's another mechanism where the lens isn't part of a um, mirror mechanism or mirror triggering mechanism, um, so that reflex never happens. And the advantage to that is there's a separate rangefinder that helps you to focus through a viewfinder. Uh, the advantage mainly is for sound and silence. Those uh, cameras have a lot m less moving parts, uh, a lot less um, opportunity for something to break, and they're also extremely quiet. So early on with 35 millimeter cameras, uh, photojournalists loved having rangefinder cameras because they were very silent or quiet and less disruptive. Now, we, we don't really care, and there's actually a lot of cameras and the higher end you get that have silencing components to um, tone down that sound. And there's also laughably um, some cameras that you can actually amplify that and make it a kind of fake sound or camera uh, trigger sound. Now, um, I recommend, now I did it kind of poorly, you never want to change that lens or take off that lens with uh, this uh, mirror portion faced upward. You always want to have that to the side or down. Uh, that's primarily because if dust gets in here, it can actually get into and behind that mirror, which um, is where your sensor lies. And uh, once you get dust or some kind of element onto that sensor, it'll show up on your images and you don't want that. So um, 
don't worry about that too heavily, just keep that in mind. Um, now I'm going to match these back up so I can put the lens back together. And I'm also going to show you that this uh, lens is um, a kit lens. It's one that comes with the camera. Um, this is a popular one for Nikon, but there's usually a kit lens of some sort that has some kind of zoom. And you can tell what that uh, lens is going to um, be most often by inside the ring here. So it's this Nikkor lens. It's an 18 to 55 millimeter. Um, the 18 being the wider angle of view that it can capture, and 55 millimeter being uh, the more telephoto or flatter uh, angle of view, which is close. 55, 50 is um, historically closest to what we see with our uh, naked eye as an angle of view. Now next to that you'll see there's a ratio here of 1 to 3.5 dash 5.6. That uh, is the aperture range of this camera, meaning that the aperture, once we get into this more in depth, it'll make more sense, but the widest open this lens can get, or the fastest it is, uh, is 3.5 at the 18 millimeter angle of view. And as you zoom to 55, it decreases, and your um, ability to open up that lens and let enough light in becomes 5.6 at its max. So keep that in mind. Then over here, you see there's a 25 millimeter, and then um, those are some things that are about depth of field, um, zero, um, sorry, infinity to 0.25 millimeters or meters, and then uh, 0.82 feet. And then next to that is a number 55, if you can see it, there it is. Uh, 55 is the, uh, thread width of and diameter of this lens for putting on filters. And this particular camera on the kit that I give out has a UV filter on it. Uh, let's see if we can get that in focus. Maybe we can't. Uh, it's not going to want to focus on something that... There we go. 55 millimeter UV filter. Okay. Now I put these on this camera because I'm um, checking these out and loaning them to people and it serves as a um, more of a protection of the lens in case it falls. So if you were going to ding this, you'd ideally like to break the you know 10 to $30 UV filter that you have on the front of the camera as opposed to the more expensive two, 300 and more expensive lens, uh, depending on what you got. Now, technically, a UV filter, though, is also serving another purpose, where it's protecting the ultraviolet coat that's on the lens. Um, that ultraviolet coating can degrade over time, which can degrade the um, quality of that lens, and so that would be an extra barrier to help pr protect that UV coat. Um, but that gets pretty technical, nothing to worry about too much. Now, um, we're going to go over just the interface and the dials and buttons real quickly on a typical DSLR. This is a Nikon. You know, one of the few uh, major popular companies, Nikon, Canon, Sony. Of course, they're all going to have different um, components and different interfaces, so just keep that in mind. I'm just giving an overview of the one that we use for this course. Now, uh, you have your on-off switch. This turns the camera on and off. This red dial here, button, is for recording video. Right here you have an exposure button, which allows you to over and under expose your image by holding this button and dialing with this dial. I'll show you that that's actually a dial that you can turn. And then next to it, I want you to notice that there's a little icon here, and that's going to be a, let's see if we can get a little closer there, that's going to be a signifier for um, an aperture setting. There we go. Now, you have on top here uh, a dial of different modes you can have the camera in. Um, I'm going to have us in this class as much as possible in M mode, which is manual mode. Okay. 
Uh, you have a hot shoe up here for putting on a flash or some kind of component that would charge from that. And then you also have a pop-up flash on here that, that I recommend not using as much as possible in the course. And you can see back here when we switch to this back interface here, you have a flash button right there. So if I have the camera on and I select that, oh, I should say this right off the bat. So Nikon did this really smart thing. So I used to have older models of this camera and the lenses often broke because they were getting jammed into bags or getting um, hit on the front end of the lens and it was starting to cause the lens to slip. So this little mechanism that goes like that was starting to jostle and, and lose the ability to hold. So if you were maybe photographing straight down, it would slide, which obviously you don't want. You don't want to suddenly be zooming um, when you don't want it, the camera to be doing that. So they came up with this fancy uh, method of locking the lens. So on these particular cameras that have this button on the zoom feature of a lens, it's in lock mode. And you'll notice when I'm on the back of the camera, it says, before taking photos, rotate the zoom ring to extend the lens. It won't allow me to do anything until I'm out of lock mode and I hit that 18 millimeter. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you're having trouble, that's most likely what's uh, not allowing you to uh, complete any functions. So um, here, by the way, this is your 18 millimeter and you have some steps. You got 24, 35. These are popular angles of view that usually come with um, fixed lenses. So if you wanted one that wasn't a zoom lens, they're often going to be choices like 24, 28, 35, 45, 55. Okay, so that's the range of this lens. And that's all reiterated down here as well. Okay, so I'm out of lock mode. I'm in 18, and I'm back to this uh, back interface here. And you'll notice there's a little flash. If I do that, it pops open the flash. I'd prefer that you guys don't use the flash. So if that pops up, just pop it back down. Um, if you're going, we're going across and we're just thinking about the interface here, the buttons, um, almost every camera has this feature. It's a little hidden feature that not many people intuitively understand unless you read the manuals. But when you're looking into the rangefinder, one of the things you might want to do, especially if you wear glasses at all, or have any um, sight impairment, you want to uh, dial next to this viewfinder um, your ability to focus on that mirror that's inside the mechanism or inside the camera. So um, my recommendation is to point your camera while it's on at something that um, has text and then dial this until you get that text in uh, sharp focus and that will calibrate that uh, viewfinder for your eyesight okay so moving on you've got an info button here you've got auto exposure lock and auto focus lock i'm not too worried about you knowing much about that yet okay you have what looks like and is a play button, and that's a preview button for viewing your photos. You have a menu button, and that's for going in and doing custom alterations and settings in the camera. Um, sorry, there we go. You've got an info button again here, an eye button, and there's a little bit of a difference. We'll explain that. Um, you have a uh, toggle or a, oh, I should have set that up here. You also. Um, again, to reiterate, you have this uh, dial, okay? Up here you have what's basically like a remote um, dial for uh, navigating through the menu. You've got an OK button in the but uh, center, which is basically your Enter button. And then you've got... Um, oh, let me see here. And then you've got a icon here for changing your shooting mode. You have a uh, magnifier 
for zooming in and out. Uh, that's both while in shooting mode and in your uh, preview mode. You have a trash can for getting rid of um, or deleting images. And then right next to here, you'll see there's a little icon that's meant to look like a timer or a clock, and that's for um, setting uh, timed exposures. Uh, so you can say, I'm going to uh, select my um, trigger release button here, right, which is the button right on top of your on off, and that's going to uh, trigger a timer of 5, 10 seconds, um, whatever it is you want to choose through your menu. Okay, now um, I should have said that off the top here too. Um, that's the button that you're going to push in order to trigger. Uh, your camera to take a photograph. Now the thing to remember, and most cameras do this, is that there are two compressions of this. You can compress, uh, com compress that button slightly in order to get it to activate and to focus on something, and then fully compress it, which is fully push it down, uh, will give you a uh, photograph. Okay. Now, most cameras have some type of card holder on the side uh, or um, access to your memory card. Okay, and this one you have to push up and that pops open. And then almost every uh, digital camera does this where your memory card, if you push in, it'll pop it out. And then if you release that, you have to pull it out, right? That takes the memory card out and then you push it and you got pop it back in so it, it actually makes a click sound. Now lastly on the uh, well not lastly on the bottom here you have a access door to a battery. Okay on this one in a lot of cameras you have to push something to um, push a, a, a door or something like that out of the way to get it to release the battery, get the camera to release the battery. Um, here is a threaded um, area for holding or for connecting your camera to a tripod. This is a standard thread. And then over here you have some access points for connecting your camera to a another device. So if you want to download your images through um, the camera to uh, your computer through a cable, you can do it through USB. You can connect HTML in order to view uh, whatever's on your camera, like a video or even your images through another device. And then this particular camera has some Bluetooth functions as well for transferring images to other devices. Uh, which I find to be kind of cumbersome and slow often, but um, people uh, sometimes use it. Now, the only other thing here is your camera strap, which I'll give you maybe, I can back out here and show you how I tend to want to hold my camera. Um, this is going to be reiterated in image form as well for you guys, but uh, one of the primary th um, things to consider when taking photographs is your own comfort. Uh, the less you have something distracting you, the better. Uh, and if you're not feeling the comfort of holding your camera, then you're going to be distracted. So one of the things I like to do is I like to take this strap and I wrap it around my wrist twice. Oh. Let's see if I can do this in this tutorial, like that. And so I have it around my wrist twice like this. So if I drop it, it catches it, right? So if I drop my camera, it's all right. But it's also not something that's um, kind of in my way at all, in my opinion. So it's a quick way to get it onto your body uh, if you, you're pulling your camera out of your bag. It's also, um, I'm, I tend to be someone who's um, annoyed or distracted by having something around my neck, so I don't really like having a camera around my neck or bouncing against me. And um, I'm also not someone who is um, 
someone who spent much money on uh, wanting an extra gadget or something like that. But they do make these slings, which are really nice actually, that have a different mechanism that um, you basically wear this around your um, chest, almost like a courier bag, and then um, it's on a, a sling or a, a tether. Right, so you can pull your camera up and then put it down and it kind of hangs at your hip, which is really nice. Um, it's just not the kind of shooting I do, so I don't really need that much. Um, I noticed here that I forgot one thing here, too, on top here. This is kind of hidden on the Nikon, but usually most cameras have, um, let me see if I can get the lighting here and zoom in, have a function called Live View. That's an LV there, you guys see that? Oh, it lost its focus. Let's see if I can gain it again. There we go, LV. So that LV is a switch that when I push it like that, I need to turn on the lens. When I register like that, it gives me a live view through my LCD screen. Um, so I'm, I'm not looking through my viewfinder anymore, I'm looking through my LCD screen. Now, that's obviously an advantage because you get a bigger viewing area of what you're uh, focusing on. You also have the option of having more things available for your, more information avail available for you when uh, looking at it this way as opposed to through your viewfinder. But it does also have a disadvantage. It um, takes up more of your battery because basically you have this backlit screen that's uh, hogging up uh, energy, right? Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. That will suck the light af life out of your battery uh, more quickly. Now, that's a quick run through of the camera. I just want to go over very quickly um, the lens again. And just for the sake of uh, seeing and understanding the aperture. Um, now, this particular lens isn't going to let me dial in some of the things I'd like you to see in terms of aperture. Um, if you're looking through, you could see there is a tiny hole in there, and I don't know if it's going to let me. There we go. It had it for a second. There. Right? That's your aperture. Now, it's not going to let me, like a traditional lens, um, manage the aperture on there so you can actually see. So I'm going to pull out a, a, a traditional fixed lens. Uh, this is for a film camera. And I'm going to just show you because on a, a traditional lens you would manually alter that. So. You can see here, right now I'm at the max um, aperture of this, turn it over, of what's called f2, or the, the speed of the lens. It's got a max, see that black dot is lined up with 2 right there? That's the speed of the lens, so if you're looking here, um, it's got a ratio of 1 to 2, it's a 35 millimeter. So typically the lower that number, on a lens, especially a zoom or, well, I guess for any lens, the lower that number gets, meaning the bigger the aperture can open, the more uh, expensive your lens gets because it's a uh, fast and uh, able to go in more, it's more versatile, it can go in lower light situations. So, anyway, we're at f2 here, okay? So maybe I'll put that lens behind there for some fun okay <laughs> now if I stop down that aperture right it starts to close down and let in less light okay that's the opposite number and we're gonna talk about our exposure triangle I'll give you some resources on that to understand that f2 and what that's um, f2 and f22 and the effect that has on letting light into your camera through your lens and the impact that has on your exposure. Okay. Now, um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, obviously, and we will uh, go from there.